chances and I'm over your chances. We're here to show you the workings and the systems of the Lagoon 42 Cat. We hope you'll enjoy yourself. She's a beautiful boat and uh, we've had road reviews from everybody sailing on. When departing the dock, it's a common error to forget about the short power cable. And if you depart without undoing it properly, you can cause all sorts of damage. This is your power pedestal, and the cable is actually in there with a slight twist, twist, clockwise twist, and out you come. Now before doing that, you must always remember to switch off the, the panel, the AC panel down below, so there's no load running. And now let's go down onto the boat and show you where it's going. So, you just flip up the, the, the top and you give it a twist to the anti-clockwise direction and out it comes. And here we are on the steering position up on the flybridge and we're going to start the engines. So first of all, we put power into the panel by just pressing that. You'll see Yanmar light up and then the lights will come on and then you hit the start button there. And you can hear she starts pretty readily. Now. The controls are quite straightforward. You've got a control for each engine. So to warm the engine up, you can depress the button in the middle with the lever up at 12 o'clock. Holding the button in, you can have throttle only and you can warm the engine up. And 1500 RPM is plenty. Now when the engine's warm, you bring it back slowly to the 12 o'clock position and if you stroke it ahead it'll go into gear and off we go back and this down so there you are we're in neutral exactly the same on this side the same starting sequence and we're up here looking at the instruments the instruments switch on down below at the um, panel and they're marked navigational instruments which I'll point out to you um, and here we have just repeaters, essentially giving us the boat speed. Um, and then you've got true wind angle um, and true wind speed. And here are the true and apparent winds. So a useful little instrument, and that also switches on with this. Um, if you come across here, you'll see that we've got a, a, a chart plotter. 
Um, and it gives very good detail. There's the boat tied up on the dock like that. And this also switches on down below on that. And of course, here, the, here are the in engine start panels, which we went through. So if you need any information on this, the manual is actually in the program. So you can scroll, scroll through and, and, uh, and go further than just using it as a general plotter. Right. And this little panel over here is for your autopilot. You can either be on standby mode, which is regular steering, um, or auto, which is now the auto um, function has taken over. You can see the wheel adjusting. If you hit this twice, it'll change to starboard 20 degrees. And if you hit it twice there to port, it'll go to port 20 degrees. If you suddenly see a log while it's on autopilot, just reach forward and hit standby, and you can take over and steer out of harm's way. So a very useful little instrument to have. So to stop the engine, never switch the power off. Always hit the stop button. And never ever hit the top button when the engine's running, because that's your start. So we're gonna, first of all, hit stop, pull it down, and the engine dies off, and you can see that. Now, then to get the power off the panel, you press and hold this down for three seconds. One, two, well, that was a bit quicker, but that's it. And with it blank like that, that indicates that it is in fact off. Okay, so this locker here on the starboard side is where we gain access to the controls for the windlass. So again, the same sort of twist lock as we've got on the engine, which is lift up here. And down here on this bulkhead mounted is the, the control. And we also have the, the small winch handle that comes with it. And that's to open and set, to open and, and shut the clutch on the windlass. So here we go. You have a down button and you have an up button. So very simply up and down. All you have to remember is the engine should be running at 1500 RPM. And I do like the engines to run especially if you had a uh, night at anchor, I like those uh, engines to run for a good 10 minutes before you use the windlass because uh, that will put some much needed current back into the batteries so that you don't do damage to the batteries or to, um, to the actual windlass itself. So this always lives here. It clips into its own little bracket. And uh, right next to it, you've got the winch handle that releases the clutch. That just stays right there. Uh, for ground tackle, we've got um, 150 feet of 3 8 chain, which is very adequate for this boat, and a decent size anchor. A bridle is already made up for you to use the snubber on the chain so that the chain is not fighting with the two stays that go on either side of the small bowsprit. And there is your, your snubber already in place and just tied off here for the time being. But when you get ready to actually anchor, you anchor in the normal fashion and then let the bridle go out in front so that it doesn't fight with the, the stays on the boat. Well, what I have here in my hands is the bridle and a chain snubber. And that's important to engage this onto the chain once you've set out the amount of chain that you need. This prevents the chain from sawing on each of the valves, and it's already preset for you. And all you have to do is just slide it in like that, lock it in place, and then take the bridle and tie it off on the cleat here once you've got yourself set. And that will mean you'll have a peaceful night and there won't be any grinding on the hop. So it's important to use the snubber every time you paint. While I have this locker open, here are your water tanks. You can see the great big blue water tanks. You've actually got two of those, two 600 litre water tanks, which is plenty of water. And uh, your fill point is right back there for the water. And if you have a look here, right. And here is the water fill point, which fills both tanks. So you've got a tank in each side, and um, that should see you happily through your charter. I've just opened the chain locker and it's worthwhile noting how the chain actually does pile up inside. You'll see a tremendous pile of chain that's almost reached the bottom 
of the windlass. So it's important to have this open when you're retrieving the chain and make sure that you lock the chain at the bottom of the locker. You'll also note down there that the, um, there are yellow marked links and every 30 feet or 10 meters the chain is marked in yellow. So it will give you a fair indication of how much chain you've got down. You also have a spare anchor with chain and road there should you have problems with your primary anchor. This is your anchor control locker. You can see the remote for picking the anchor up and down. We keep our hose in there and there's 600 feet of heavy duty line plus some buckets. As you can see, cavernous amount of storage space. And that's where the uh, locker outside here in the cockpit is full of interesting stuff. Starting off with the emergency steering tiller, which we showed you earlier on. That lies in here with the actual tiller handle. There is a fuel, there is a fuel tank, obviously, and a toolkit. The toolkit's there, and here we have engine spares, of filters and impellers and V-belts and things like that. This is a spare adapter for your shore power, which may come in handy. And of course a cable, which is very useful if you want to secure the dinghy to somewhere safe at night when you go out, you have a, a dinghy security cable. Um, and of course some wooden plugs. In this corner here, we have top-up oil, we have antifreeze and um, and some WD-40, some penetrating oil. And that's everything in this locker. And of course, two winch, two um, bilge pump handles, and they operate the bilge pumps on either quarter. Also in this locker is your emergency marine kit, which comprises of all the flares that you would use. So that's your flare bag. Um, on this side of the locker, you've got all the extra lines that you'd need. There's a spare mooring line and some other small lines which could be useful on the boat. Here we have the propane storage locker. So we just open that up and you have two, two tanks and uh, one is a spare tank and we have a length of hose. So when you want to use the barbecue out there, you just take the spare bottle and the hose and you connect straight into the regulator. The regulator, at this instance, has been taken off and stored inside the barbecue. But that's how you would be able to bring up the barbecue instantly have plenty of gas to cook. Right, and here we have cold storage outside here. Yeah, it runs with the, the same fridge compressor as inside, but it's a useful thing for keeping drinks and what have you cool. Right, here's your fridge, so you just press that and open this up and there is a handsome little fridge for the regular little freezer section up here and the thermostat is way inside there best to reach that by taking this tray apart but at the back you'll see the thermostat control so in addition to your regular day fridge this here is a freezer and the thermostat control is there and as you can see, it's a generous size. And you just press, the, pull that out, and press that down, that's it. And just the twist locks it in place, and then to pull it out, you just pull it out, and then lift it down. Right. So, lighting the stove is fairly easy. You just move the button across to the light position, and then you press the lighter. And hey presto, it's lit and going. You hold it down for a few seconds, and the thermostat, the thermocouple hangs in there. Now, you want to do the next one, exactly the same, just rotate it and then press this light button and there you have it. Okay. Right, and then over here we have a standard microwave and you've got to be plugged into shore power for that to be working. Right. And the oven is very simple. It does lock here, it's got a little locking bar by just pulling it down and moving it so it won't open. Flick it back up and hey presto it opens. Move this across to that symbol which shows the, the oven working and hit it and you can see down there the blue flame all nicely lit and ready for you to cook on. Switch off, back to there and you can always tell when it's off because you can't turn it unless you press it in. So with it out like that, that's off. 
and then back to there and lock. Right, and this is how you get fresh water out of the boat if your pump failed and you weren't getting out of your domestic taps, you would use this foot pump. You open up here, like that, so you open that, and then just twist that so it lifts up. It's now ready for pumping, and a few strokes, you've got water. All right, switch off, and then depress this down. Well, actually, you have to have that open to lock off, and then switch. Is that? Right, we're looking at VHF radio. Very simple, switch that on, and you'll see the panel light up, and you're on 16 security, straight away. Security, security, now, if you wanted to go to WX, you just hit that, and WX gives you your weather channel, so you have 10 of them in this area, and we're listening to that at the moment. You want to change channels, you just rotate here, down there, and you just rotate there. And there are, as I said, volume, cha channel change. Okay, you want to go back to 16, you hit the 16 button and you're back to 16. And from there on, changing channels, you can go to any channel you want. Want to suddenly get back to WX, you hit WX and there you are. So very straightforward. If you want to use the AIS function, you can just hit that button and it will give you the information on ships around you. Switching off, you just rotate that and switch it off. Now uh, we're looking here at the heater exhaust. It's very important to make sure we don't have a fender or anything hanging in the way, especially the dinky painter. So you burn through that painter in seconds. So, and you can hear it roaring and just by quickly brushing your hand across, you can feel the burner is engaged. Now that little unit on the chart, chart panel is the unit that controls all of this. So we'll go back to the chart table we'll show you exactly how you bring that to work. But be patient, that's what you'll hear. And keep stuff out of the way from the actual This is the little controller for the heat. And you can move the emblem across the left or across the right just by engaging those. And if you look carefully, you can see a pulsing a symbol uh, designating a, a flame or, or heat. And what you do is you press OK when that happens and it'll transfer down to here. Can you see the same emblem there? And with that on, steady at the bottom like that, it will give you heat. And there is a timer um, for setting the amount of time that you want. We preset this at half an hour, which we feel is adequate to heat up the boat. These here are the fans. One speed, one sp speed or the second speed. And this here is your thermostat for the area that you're working in. So you switch that on and you engage and then that will work with the fan. Can you hear the fan kick in? So that's gotta be on, this is gotta be on. That gives you a blast of hot air. But remember, heater won't work unless you've got a steady symbol there. Right, and we're looking at the electrical panel. This section is your AC, in other words, your shore power and you plug your shore power on and you can get the battery charger working, which is most important, that's on. And you can get the water heater on. If you flick that across, you'll have hot water. We don't need hot water at the moment. And these are the AC plug inlets in the cabin. So wherever you want to plug something in, uh, you just flick that on and you'll get power at the plugs, okay? And this is uh, AC plugs, both front and back of the vessel, right here. So that's your AC panel. This is the DC panel, and you've got this natty little control gauge here, which tells you how you're doing. There is your domestic voltage. Is it 13.7? Okay, and you hit that again, and your engine voltage is at 30.7 as well. So they're all balanced. This just gives you light on and light off. This here is your tank. We have one position here for your, your tanks. And you can see that we've got three quarters in tank one and exactly the same here. So in other words, it only reads progressively, like there's two tanks in the boat and they both go down together. So that's why you only have tank one position and not tank one and two. Now, if you want to read the fuel, you move across to the right and press that. 
there's fuel tank one. Now you do have two tanks there. You can see that that's not 100% full. So we press again to go to the second fuel tank and it's in exactly the same position. So basically you've got two fuel tanks each being monitored with the gauge and you do have two water tanks, but they go down together and they're red as one tank. And here are your batteries. Okay. And over here is a plug point. If you want a cigarette lighter attachment, you want to charge something up, you just plug straight into there and it gives you 12 volt power. Over here is the bilge pump. You've got starboard bilge pump and port bilge pump. Um, over here is your steaming lights and navigation lights and anchor lights and your water pump. That's important. You can hear that run when we switch that on. I like to have that off so that if the tap was left on, you wouldn't empty your whole supply of water. This is the LP, LP gas control. You switch that off when you're not using it. And these are just deck lights. And here, navigational instruments. That one has to be on to do your plotters and your wind speed and everything up at the bridge. Over here is your fridge unit. Now that is one master switch for the, all the fridge units on the boat. And if we come down to here, this is your solar power controller. Okay, and it tells you how you're doing with your charging with your solar panels. Um, and this is the inverter status and it'll tell you whether you um, have the inverter on at all or not. Now, I think we'll go down into the cabin and show you where all the fuses and controls are. This is an important panel. You undo it here and then you slide it and that shuts the cabin door in this cabin. So there you are, it's completely shut here. But when it's shut, it gives you access to all electrics. So you press that button and pull it open and there you have your main breakers. If you look carefully at this, you'll see that there's breakers for the anchor windlass, the picture of an anchor. For the electric winches up on deck, you've got two of those. And then you have your inverter on off switch here. And this is your solar output. We don't ever have to touch those. In fact, you shouldn't really have to do anything here. Occasionally you may get the anchor fouled up and under a lot of load, it would pop that breaker and that's what it would look like when it's popped and then you reset it by doing that. Right. So we're in the, um, in the head here, and there is a cupboard, as you can see, an opening panel, which gives you access to the um, plumbing for the holding tank, and also inlets for the toilet. The most important thing is you'll see a big, a large red handle. And when that handle's across the pipe, that means the holding tank has shut off. If you wanted to empty the holding tank, you just rotate that red handle so that the handle is in line with the pipe and the holding tank will empty. So it's a gravity feed, gravity empty holding tank. So we're looking at a standard Japsco marine toilet and there's just a few things to note here. This is your pump and you, whenever you leave the toilet, you should be in the dry bulb position. Can you see a picture of a dry bulb? The black lever is across on this side, meaning that the valve's shut to let water in. You want to use the toilet, move this across to the left. You're in the wet bulb position. Twist the handle and start pumping and you can see water coming into the toilet and being flushed at the same time. So that's how you would use the toilet. When you've finished, what you do is you Put it onto the dry bulb position again and pump. You'll still get a little bit of ingress of water, but you can see no more water is coming in. Now, the secret of success of this is to pump as many times as you can to so keep the toilet clean, smelling fresh, and working well. So that's your marine toilet. Remember, leave it on the dry bulb position. So on the boat, in each hanging locker, you will find these rotational devices, your life jacket. Make sure that it fits you, make sure there is enough on board the boat and you know where they all are. We also have five fire extinguishers in various places. You can see one right here, there's one in each cabin and there's fire extinguishers in the engine compartment. Um, we also have a first aid kit up here and we also 
have a, a secondary uh, first aid kit in the cockpit locker. So I'm inside the engine compartment. There's two and they are identical. So over here, just to show you, is where the dipstick is. There it is. And you dip down there. If you needed to fill oil in there, it would be filled in this yellow fill point right here. Watch out for this. This is an emergency stop. Um, and it also protects uh, starting the engine. So if you didn't want somebody to just go up and push the buttons and go off in your boat, you would open up the engine and rotate this and the engine would not start. Over here, you've got battery controls and they're exactly the same on both sides. Um, you have this, the engine start battery and the house batteries. Okay, and uh, if you rotate it to this side, that's off and that's on, as you can see. And uh, over here, you have your engine off and your engine on. So these are the house batteries. This is the engine battery. And this here is your ground. That's off and on. There you have it. What we're looking at there is the Vetus water trap. Now, it's got a screw-on lid on top. And essentially, when uh, the flow of water gets reduced and the engine starts running a bit warmer, you can bet that it's because that basket is full of eel blocks. And holding here is your emergency steering tool. Should cables break or become disconnected, you lose your steering. You can undo that with a winch handle and then you just drop this straight in to the steering quadrant down there and you rotate it until it engages. There are, it's now engaged and you sit here and you steer. There are, you can see me steering here. And that gets you home. Up we come. Now this room lives in this locker. There we go. Let's open this up. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to launch the tender. And uh, we use that winch behind, and you'll notice that we've rolled all the cockpit covers away so that nothing gets caught when we're doing it. Very easy to get one slipped into a winch and then you've got a hole in your screen. So we've freed this off, which we'll do. And we'll get a few turns onto the winch behind me. And we'll take up the strain so we can undo the, the tethers that are here. So here we go. Good couple of turns on here and into the jaw and we're ready to go. And this should be lifted off, there we are. Okay, now I just need a winch handle and it's right here and on hand. Okay, so I'm going to take up a bit of the strain and then we can release these tethers. There we are, so if we could undo the tether on that side, that would be terrific. So now I'm just going to ease the tender down into the, into the water. And you'll see it goes here. And you just ease it down slowly like that. It's so important to note that the bung is actually refitted. We always pull it out and then take the bung out so if it does rain, it doesn't fill the boat up the water. So we just lower it into the water and away we go. We're going to go through pulling it up. We're going to just take a few turns on here and into the jaws. And when we pick it up, we just make sure nothing's catching. Make sure the carabiners are nice and straight and it's coming up nicely. So here we go. Wind this up until the thing is actually touching here, so there's no point to go any further over there. You can see it's touching there, so that's on nicely. And then I'm going to organize the tether on each side, so we tether it off. Okay, that's great. And now let's go and do the other side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to release this line so that the weight is all going to be on the tethers and not on the block up here. You can see the block's taking quite a lot of strain. So all I do is come across here and undo that and then slowly release it until it's been held by the tethers. And here we are. So the, the final thing is to lock the clutch so that this is held 
and then we can just tidy up the lines and as I said put the bike back. Starboard quarter, you've got a heaving line all ready for deployment. You just unclip, hold on to that and toss it. You've got a heaving line at the ready. And here we have your standard life buoy with 15 meters of floating line right here at your disposal. Thank you so much for watching our short video presentation. I do hope that this helps you on your trip. We sincerely hope that you have a great trip. If there are any questions that you have pertaining to the operation, you've also got the manual that you can refer to and you can call me. 1250-729-5592. Have a great holiday and thank you for sailing with the Nightmare Yacht Charter.